Hello, everyone. We have a very excited day because uh, now we can answer a lot of questions. I know uh, one, a lot of friends and audience want to have their own podcast. They always ask, what do we, what do we need to do? And I always uh, do some consultation, buy this, buy that, or uh, which platform they use. But I have somebody here uh, who um, has better experience in podcasting. He, he's doing it for a long time, and uh, he actually does a really great job on editing other people podcasts as well. His name is Ivan Johnson, founder of Path to Podcast Success. Welcome to my show, Ivan. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm happy to be here. It's always exciting when I get to be a guest on other shows because I am definitely way more used to being the host. Yes, yes. I see you hosting a lot of podcasts with other podcasters and I love what you did because um, I already had uh, another podcast with you. I mean, you you were the host. And I loved your style about the presentation, editing. And uh, then I say, oh, it's good to have you here because then we can answer a lot of questions. All right. Uh, first, tell me about yourself. How, why did you end up to a podcaster? So uh, I've been a podcaster slash entrepreneur both uh, go hand in hand for me for, for quite some time. Um, when I was in high school, I began to look for some extra cash, right? I wanted to get a high school job like a lot of high schoolers do. Um, my mom, who has been an entrepreneur for my, for my entire life growing up, uh, she had a podcast and a business. And when she saw me looking for, you know, looking for a job, she asked me, would you like to, if I, you know, if I gave you the tools and taught you how to do this, paid you a little bit of money, would you edit my podcast for me? And I was like, okay, sure. Right. I was, I was a teenager and I was like, all right, sure, I guess. And then uh, as time went on, she, you know, you know, wanted more money to, you know, cause I got older. Um, she was like, why don't you do this for other people as well? And I was like, huh? Okay. That's good. That's crazy enough. It just might work. And so um, she sent one person in my way. Uh, someone asked her about podcasting and, um, and, and I did a great job for them. And then they sent someone my way and so on and so forth. Um, and I'm 22 now. So over, over five years, um, I've been doing podcasting and entrepreneurship. And that, uh, in a nutshell, is uh, how, I, how I got started. Well, that's amazing. What a great mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah. start, actually. At this age, uh, you already have your own business and uh, you are doing a great job, as I've seen your work. And uh, just give us some tips about podcasting first. And uh, tell me how, let's see, let's say somebody come to you and ask you how to start podcasting. What do you recommend? Uh, well, my, my number one first comment for pretty much anybody when it comes to podcasting, and this I've learned both talking to people who have learned this both the hard way and, and they just knew it. And from, uh, from being up and down on this and learning it the hard way myself as well. The number one thing uh, with a podcast, if your goal is to use it to grow an audience in a business, if you don't, if you don't really care about what your numbers are, then it doesn't matter. But if your goal is to grow, then, uh, the number one thing is consistency. It's, I like to, uh, I like to use TV shows as an example. It's like, you know, you and the whole family that your favorite show comes out every Friday night at eight o'clock. Right. And so you sit down every Friday night at eight and the show comes on and it's great. Right. And then one week you sit down Friday night at eight and then all you see is, Oh, sorry guys. We couldn't get to an episode this week. Check back next week. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I don't think, yeah. People are probably going to stop watching the show. Right. The numbers will not go. They, they may stand still, they may even go down, they definitely won't go up nearly as fast as it did before. And a podcast is pretty much the same thing. Does that make yeah, sense? It's the habit, it's the habit. As soon as yeah. you listen to it, oh, you're waiting for another one. And as, as you said, it should be very consistent. Uh, since I started, I have it every day. Like, mm -hmm. uh, Which is impressive. Yeah, yeah, every day. But you know, 
what was my problem i had i postponed podcasting because and i had shows and i didn't know how to upload all the podcasting in one sh- in one uh, platform because i had different mm-hmm. topics then i talked to another podcaster and she said look you don't need to have different podcasts put it on the on the on, uh, under the umbrella of one podcast and then have it in different days like author promotion is always on monday tuesday i have fertility empowerment show you know every day i have one uh, a specific thing to talk like a specific yeah. different t- topic yeah i think that's really creative and that's a creative way to, to get around the problem of having too much like that you want to talk about you know what i mean which i think yes. is a problem for a lot of people is they have like their main thing their business is about but sometimes you know that can be multiple things and i i, I really like your solution because having one cast is better than multiple because then you only have to grow one podcast you know what i mean so yes yes so uh how like what are the benefits of having a podcast how much time do you have? I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. It's arguably the best. I mean, in my opinion, it's 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 the one of the best ways to to one of the best tools to have with the business because you have blogs, you have videos, and you have podcasts. Right? Those are kind of like the big different uh, three types of 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 content that that you can make and that people can consume when it comes to business. I'm coming at this with like a, a with business in mind, right? Um, the reason why I think podcasting is the best out of those three is because it's easier both to produce and to consume. Um, it, but depending on how you do it, it may be about as difficult to produce as like a YouTube channel or something like that, but it's way easier to consume because with a blog, you have to sit down and you have to take focused time to read the blog, right? which a lot of people don't have a lot of. And yeah, and same thing with the YouTube video. You have to you have to sit down and you have to have focus time where you watch this video. Whereas with the podcast, uh, you know, if you're consuming, if you're listening to a podcast, right, your listeners, they can listen to you while they're driving to work, while they're working out, while they're making dinner, while they're doing whatever, right? And honestly, that alone, in my opinion, really ma- puts it over the edge, um, over the top as... Uh, one of the best ways to consume content like that. One of the best ways to talk to your audience and having you in their ears like that. It's kind of interesting. If you listen to podcasts at all, you may have found this for to be true for yourself as well. But listening to a podcast, it like you feel like you know the person kind of. Like you feel you feel familiar with them, right? You almost feel you feel more like you can trust them. It develops that no like and trust, right? Yeah. Way faster and way easier. Um, oftentimes than than say like video or or uh, written content. Does that make sense? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I actually because a lot of people ask me why do you do this for free. I said this is first of all, it's the passion that you're doing. <laughs> Second, you are actually create the trust between you and your audience. Mm-hmm. And if you want to present your work and what you're doing, people listen to your work and they learn. So this way you add some value. If you cannot just sell your product without any um, any presentation or talking about what you're doing, people need to know you first, need to yeah. trust you first. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So uh, let's have some break, a like few second break, and we come back and we continue talking. Perfect. Please subscribe to Panta Calhoun Transition Channel and order my book, Moons of Change for the Better. Tune up your mood and transform your life to reach your biggest dreams. All right, give me three tips uh, that you think is very important to be successful in entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship, okay, that's more general than podcasting. Yeah. 
That's a very interesting question, and I think that there are way, way more than three, you know, good tips out there for entrepreneurship. But honestly, a lot of it can be translated from podcasting. I think, well, I'm just going to use the same one I used before, consistency, right? I think that's just as important in entrepreneurship as it is in um, in podcasting. It's, well, yeah, you, you know exactly why it's important. If you're not consistent, then it's never going to happen. You know what I mean? Um, my second point would be to be clear on what you want and why you want it. And the reason I say that isn't because it's like a typical answer that you hear with entrepreneurship, right? It's because I see a lot of people online who they, 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 they want a certain thing in business, right? And they're always like, oh, I need to be accountable with this, or I need to do this and that. And if you are really clear on what you want and you know that you want it. And when I say want, I mean like it's like a a desire, right? Like you need to have this. Um, I forget exactly the term, but if you've read uh, Think, and, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, he talks about it a little bit in that book, right? That, 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 that like true desire. Um, it's that, right? You need to know what that is. You need to have that desire. Um, and then, you know, and then it'll happen because it has to happen. Um, and I think one thing I'd, else I'd like to say on that is that it, it sometimes can take time to develop. People think that's a desire you just need to have, right? Like you see, you ask a kid, what do you want to be? And you grow up and they're like, I want to be this. Um, that's, that, that, that's honestly rare in my experience. And so it is something that you can create for yourself and develop over time. But it is something I believe you do need to have if you want to be like really successful in business. You can be kind of successful and have something you kind of want, right? That's fine. But you need to, if you want to be really successful, you need to know what you really want. You need to really know it, right? Um, does that make sense? Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> did you did you did you say all of them? Three. Uh, I got to give you a third one still. Yeah. I got to give you a third one still. Um, it's kind of it's kind of cheesy to say it, but you have to actually believe you can do it. Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things where a lot of people out there would roll their eyes when you say that. I know I have some, uh, since I'm still pretty young, I still keep in contact with a lot of people I knew back in high school. And I know a lot of them uh, would probably roll their eyes if I said, you know, one of my top three tips for business growth is you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's true. You know, I found that the more cheesy a thing is, the more true it actually is. Because if you don't actually believe it's going to happen, then how is it? Why? Why would it happen? You give up. You give up soon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so number. So the third tip kind of ties into the second tip, but I think it's important enough that it deserved its own spot. So exactly. those those would be, you know, if you ask me tomorrow, I may give you different ones, but in this moment, those those would be the three tips I would give someone if they came to me yes. asking to start a business. You know, another good thing for podcasting, first of all, is getting more popular. And uh, the good thing is, if you, there are some differences be between YouTube and podcasting, because I'm doing oh, yeah. both of them. Uh, first of all, um, for the YouTube, you need uh, more equipment, <laughs> probably a virtual background, yeah. or you need a projector, you need, um, you know, a lot of things beside it and plus everything you need for podcasting uh, you have to include in youtube shows and uh, especially for women it's more stressful because you have to get ready have a makeup you know <laughs> but uh, men are easier to deal with this and uh, for podcasting you really don't need to do this right yeah. yeah, you just have your podcast and that's it. You don't need a fancy background or whatever. You just need a very good microphone and uh, that's it. Yeah. And, yeah. I wouldn't, if someone came to me, like, I wouldn't tell someone don't do YouTube, right? It's great. You do both. I'm sure you've seen success with both. But if someone came to me and said, I don't have a lot of time, I don't have a lot of money, what do I do? I say, start with a podcast. Because one of the most successful podcasts I've worked on because I don't like you mentioned it, but I don't just I, I host my own show and I and I edit and produce shows for other people as well. Uh, one of the most successful shows that I've ever worked on, and I mean like hundreds of thousands of, of listens, 
uh, the guy, he records his podcast on his phone on the drive home from dropping his son off at school. Wow. So, he doesn't, he, so he doesn't even have the fancy microphone. I mean, you know, microphones nowadays on phones are pretty good. Um, and, like, I wouldn't tell someone to stick with that long term, right? Like, if someone, when, when you have an opportunity, I would upgrade your mic and so on and so forth. But, but the guy, I mean, he was invited to speak on stage with some really high-level people because the organizer of the event heard his podcast, the same show he records in the car. You know, after he goes and he works out or drops his kids off at school or something like that. So that's not something you can easily do when it comes to YouTube. So, again, I wouldn't tell someone not to do YouTube, but I would say it is significantly easier to start a podcast and you could get just as much success as you could with a YouTube channel as well. And, uh, yeah, we're going to go to different benefits of podcasting, telling you. (laughs) (laughs) I've been there. But first of all, as you see, you don't need to be fancy. And you don't need to overthink when you're going to do it and what you want to do. So people do a lot of research before doing any podcast. That's what I, that's what I did. And that's why I was, I was like, oh, maybe I could start earlier. But uh, I said, maybe I have to put all the podcasts in the website. But see, Ivan doesn't have any website. <laughs> But still, he's very successful because he's doing everything on the Facebook, you see. So you don't need a fancy website or like uh, stuck with the technology because, first of all, podcast platforms give you the website. Like uh, right now, I'm on 13 platforms, more than 13 platforms. And if you look at all of them, they're all websites. <laughs> So I said, wow, I should have started earlier, right? And uh, as you said, you don't need to be very complicated. You just have to be consistent, as he said, and uh, add value to what you're doing and try to satisfy your audience, see what they need, what you can offer to them. And uh, that's what you can do with your podcasting and, (laughs) yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I want to say I want to say really quick. I just want to highlight how important what you said was. Where like I could have started earlier because something a phrase one of my favorite sayings uh, that I know of and I think applies perfectly to podcasting is uh, when is the best time to plant a tree? Well, the best time was twenty years ago, but the second best time is now. Wow. And yes. that apply that is podcasting because yeah. you don't need all the fancy stuff. Um, I have, I I have, you know, had websites in the past and things like that, but, um, I, I try to be an example of, you don't need that to have a successful podcast. Um, it depends on how much, I mean, when you get to a certain point, if you want to have a huge audience, which I personally have, like I live with how my business is and how I want it to be and all that kind of stuff. I do not need nor desire to have millions and millions and millions and millions of views, um, but I, I work with people who do, so I still know how to how to make that happen. Um, you, you just you do do what is right for you, and regardless, you can bring that stuff in down the line, right? It's honestly more important to start the podcast now and bring in the other stuff later than to just not do it at all. Exactly. Because yes. even if you have everything set up, it's a pretty much it's a universal rule with podcasting that uh, your first episodes are going to be bad. Like they're going to be really bad. Uh, like they're not going to be great, right? It's one of those things where 50 episodes down the line, if you go back and listen to episode one, you're going to cringe and you're not going to enjoy it. You're going to be like, oh my God, oh. No, but right? at least you did it. You at least you did yeah, it. But you, but yeah, you have to do it. You can't get to episode 50 exactly. unless you put out episode one. So but a lot of times... You know, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was going to... Yeah, so yeah, what were you going to say? Uh, I'm going to say something and then we go to comments. Okay. Uh, you know... Uh, the good thing about my podcast is there was a gap between YouTube show and podcast. Uh, in one hand, it's good because I got more experience. Now I get back to those YouTube shows that, that I already recorded. Uh, it was live already. And then I'm going to upload it in my podcast. I can change it when I do it, <laughs> uh, my podcast, you know. So and that's the second um, opportunity I give to my shows to be live again. 
So this mm -hmm. way, I, a person with my show get two, two times exposure because there is a gap between show and podcast. Yeah. So whatever you do, there is benefits inside. <laughs> Don't yeah, worry. Yeah. There's, yeah, even having a podcast is a benefit, right? Like there, you could do nothing but put out episodes exactly. and and it'll be a you benefit the more the more you do the more benefit you will get right so someone who has a really expansive website and has a place for the audience to go will get more listeners faster than someone who doesn't right that's it, it but it's not necessary is what like yeah. it's it just depends on what you want how fast you want to grow how big you want to grow and why you're doing it that that so dictates what you I'm need. gonna I'm gonna go to the comments and we, we come back here to see how we can have more exposure on the podcast and have more audience. Susie yeah. Tomasi actually say uh, we are uh, agree on your tips. She said, "What is the best platform to start your podcast?" Okay, can you answer this? Yes, I can. Um, well, I'm I'm not sponsored by anything, so I'm just gonna put that out there first. This is just what I've used, what I enjoy. If you're starting a podcast, uh, check out Simplecast. Just Simple. all one word, right? Simplecast. Um, type you know Simplecast. Type that in Google, you'll find it. It's a podcast hosting site. If you don't know what that is, it's a place where your podcast lives, and then from Simplecast, it's sent out to Spotify and iTunes and everywhere, right? You want it to be in all those places. But Simplecast is. Um, not, if, if you're a little, if you know any, if you're at all technical, it's where like the RSS feed is generated. So it's what it's what places like Spotify and iTunes, it's where they look to get your podcast content. So check out Simplecast. I recommend it for a lot of reasons. Really easy to use interface, and it has a really cool feature called Recast, where it lets you uh, create. You can create audiograms for your show, which are those little videos where it's a still image with oh, like the waveform of the audio. On. Oh, that's why you you actually ch um, did it there. Because yeah, I, because what I yeah. do, I use Libsyn. And okay. So I love I've used this both. platform. Oh, you oh use yeah. Both? Look, I've I've used both. I started on Libsyn and then eventually yeah. I, I, I switched to when I started new podcasts. I'd put them oh, on Simplecast. Oh, but I started okay. Libsyn. I, I've used both. They're both amazing. I like Simplecast a little bit more though because um yeah. I but they both accomplish the same thing. But I like Simplecast a little bit more because I think the user, user interface is, is a little nicer. Uh, yeah, it, it looks a little better to use. Because okay. Libsyn kind of looks like it's a website that came straight out of like 2008 or something like that, right? Yeah, but Nothing wrong with that. The, but, problem, the, the good thing with the Libsyn, because I'm a technical person. Okay. Um, when you have an old platform, it means that platform evolved. Mm, so true. Uh, most of the errors that they they already faced is resolved. So right. they have less errors than other platforms. Right. You uh, could no, use either one and accomplish no, the no, same. No, no, no. Hang thing. on. Simple. You said simple cast. Simple cast. Yes. So what I do, I use Libsyn and I use Wave. Okay. Well, to create those fancy stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Wave. So I don't know, both ways you can use Simplecast uh, because as you said, that's good because you can have the feature in like two feature in one yeah, platform. I, I don't have to subscribe to a second thing for exactly. those audiograms. It has it in it. Like Which that. honestly, just that in and of itself is really the main reason why Simplecast is pushed to the top for me over Libsyn. Um, but again, they both accomplish the same thing. So it's yeah. not it's not a huge deal. That's just what I would recommend. So for, for Susie or for anyone who wants to start a podcast, I would say go to Simplecast, uh, get an account. It's pretty cheap. Um, and then you can start your podcast from there. If you are, if money is a big obstacle, um, then use, um, what was it called? There's a free one, Anchor. That's what it is. Anchor. Anchor. Anchor is too. Yeah, I've heard. About yeah, that. that that is my that is arguably the best free service. So if you if you see if you can't spend any money, um, and uh, simple cast is I'm pretty it's, it's like it's like less than forty dollars, um, per month. I think it's around twenty for what, what I'm paying. Um, but if you can't spend any money, then Anchor is the best free one because I still say even if you can't spend any money, still start it right. So if that's an obstacle, don't let it be. Start with Anchor. But if you can't afford to spend some money, I would say 
uh, simple cash will be my personal recommendation uh, or Libsyn, you know, whatever works best for you. And again, I'm not sponsored by any of them. That's just what I've used. Too, and what I've, I've, I've used too. all of them and that's what I like. Ivan, I, I'm going to add something. Um, I'm not yes. really a fan of uh, free stuff, especially when you want to put your podcast there because I've heard right. when you have it, um, it may go on for a, after a while. So it's it's good to pay. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, no. I only I only problem, bring up Anchor. Yeah, yeah. The problem, you know, Lipsin, Lipsin or Simplecast uh, depends how much volume you put on your podcast. You can uh, start very cheap, like I don't know, five dollar, ten dollar, or something. But the p- problem is because I had a lot of podcasts every day, every day then uh, it's getting more expensive and then you that, have yeah and you have yeah. so you have to limit your podcast not too long first because you get um, people get bored and then you have to be careful how much you want to pay and how much you want to maintain it. one thing i will say and i didn't mention this but this is another reason that i like simplecast more is because they charge based off of subscriber count not based right. off of storage so like and the, and the subscriber count difference that will make, force you to upgrade you won't reach for a long time unless you already have an expansive audience. So you could release one of you know an hour episode every single day and you won't have to upgrade your plan like wow, you do. Wow, I like that. Okay, I'll maybe yeah. check it out. Thank so you. yeah, that that is another big plus uh, for me because again I've used both um, for myself and for others uh, for podcasts I've produced. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I've had live shows. How can I transfer them to a podcast? It's so easy. You should have an audio one, right? So the MP3 file, the MP4 file should be trans um, transferred to MP3, right? And then you can upload them. Yeah, well, yeah, you you actually have more expertise in this than me because you record your episodes live right now, like you you know record them live and then release them. So you use Streamyard, right? Yeah, I use a StreamYard. A StreamYard is good because I can have uh, live shows in different platforms. Right now, is uh, my Facebook and my YouTube both, and then uh, you can have it uh, recorded already. So and it's already edited. Everything is there. So that's why I don't actually, um, I don't actually put any effort for editing. <laughs> that's the <a> good point. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, and the, for podcasting, uh, the point is I just make the posters because they need different uh, size of posters. I don't know if you have the same issue, <laughs> but as soon as you have the first template, then you copy and paste, or right. you just change the photos. You know, so the first yeah. one is is always more difficult <laughs> because you have to write and create and design but later is much easier because you mm-hmm. don't have anything extra you just yep. change it but w- what i really found in show po- and podcasting is that every no and then you have to create be creative like i have um, i have a trailer before my podcasts and shows and I try to change it every now and then <laughs> right. because it's, it's getting um, boring if you just want to have them for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's good. It's good to change it up. <laughs> we have a few minutes left. Okay. Uh, first of all, answer this question, please. Yes. What are the three tips that you think entrepreneurs may fail? Um, Not the three well, tips, actually. Three factors. Right, the, the three factors, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Podcasting or entrepreneurship or both? Yeah, go with the podcast. Go with the podcast, okay. There are a lot of reasons why people fail at, at podcasting. There's some crazy... I don't have the, the, the exact statistic off the top of my head, but it's something like 90% of podcasts or something or like five episodes or less. It's crazy. Um, yeah, one they, big, go, they start very enthusiastic and then after seven yes. episodes when i talked to so many podcasters they said they, they can't uh, last more than seven right. episodes so i think one thing so here's what i'm gonna say is uh so for my first reason people fail i'm gonna say i'm gonna give a a, a tip for podcasting and then it's if you don't do that 
people that's way easier to, to get burnt out and fail. So I highly recommend when you record podcast episodes, whether you record with guests or solo, you batch record, right? So block out, take it Tuesday is your podcast day, right? You record, you, you line up two, three, four episodes on a Tuesday and record those. Um, and then you're good, right? As opposed to you record like an episode every single day or you, you, something like that, right? Or you just record whenever someone schedules or whenever you have time, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's way easier to get burnt out that way, right? If you take Tuesday or whatever, you pick a day, and you make that your podcast day, then you're a lot, you're you're way more likely to last uh, a lot longer because it, it, it's going to be harder to get burnt out. Does that make sense? Oh, that's not going to work for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's very, it's it's a very case by case basis, right? Yeah, I just oftentimes of all, that's what I, I find. Never, first of all, as I said. I prefer not to record uh, because this way I found it live. You, I get much more exposure. Right. People, audience can come and ask questions in live oh, yeah. show, in shows. I'm not sure. I've never done podcasting a stream. Have you mm -hmm. done it? Uh, I have to ask some question from you. Uh, but when you have shows, you get live. And then what I do, I just uh, right. uh, have the MP3 and then upload it. Yeah, so yeah. this way for me is much easier and less time consuming. It's it's a very case by case basis. Uh, you are actually interestingly enough in the minority of people who like most people who have a podcast do not uh, record live. Right, recording live is great, um, but the problem is a lot of people don't have either the time or the effort or like they don't have the energy to spare to, to want to do that. Right, because that's the thing with the podcast is it can be pretty easy and people usually like it to stay easy. Whereas streaming adds another step and it's a little bit more difficult for some people, right? It's amazing that you've done it and it's doing nothing but helping your podcast grow even faster. But most people I talk to, um, and again, this isn't to say one is better than the other, but a lot of people don't record live, right? So assuming you don't record live, even if you can, you can still schedule them for, so that they're on a specific day if that's beneficial to you, which, and if it's not for you, that's great. But I, this is just going off of what I've seen the majority to be, right? Batch recording depending on how often you release and how often you record solo guests, all that kind of stuff. The majority of the time that will be more beneficial and will help you to not get burnt out. But that's not the case with everybody. That's just something that I've seen. Does that make sense? Yes. But let me ask you something. Let's yes. say on Tuesday you have batch recording first. How many podcasts do you record on one day? Um, I personally don't like to go over three because if I have three hours of straight podcasting, then I can get kind of tired yeah, and I, I yeah, won't be able to I show know. up fully. But I only release one episode a week, so there's almost a month's worth of I content. See, I see. Out okay, day. you do this. You know what I did before? I I record every day for different podcasts. Then I said, okay, let's just plan it out because uh, it makes me so confused uh, because I have five different shows. Mm -hmm. Then I, even for recording, if I, let's say I have auto promotion, I record it on Monday. Mm -hmm. So if I have somebody scheduled time on Monday, I'm 100% sure that's from auto promotion. Show. Right. So this way I am very scheduled. I don't confuse myself. Right, right. To be completely honest, and this is very interesting to see, is you are very unique when it comes to podcasting, at least yeah, in the people you. I've talked to. And I've talked to a lot of podcasters. So if, if, if someone is having their podcast structured like you are, then yeah, batch recording probably is not going to work as well. But for most people, um, batch recording will, will be what makes the difference between getting burnt out and not, right? Because for yeah, you, beautiful. you're not batching, but you're very scheduled, you're very focused, and your podcast is one of your main things that you do, right? Um, it's like you're way more scheduled. I'm talking about batch recording versus just randomly recording episodes whenever you can, right? You know, yeah, then, then, you, then you know, let's say you release on Mondays. Well, Sunday night rolls around, and you've got nothing. Well, you got to sit down, you got to record, even if it's like midnight, right? So you batch record. It's going to help a lot, assuming you don't structure your podcast um, like you do. Um, in which case it might not work as well, right? No better, no, not saying one's better or worse. It just, it, it just depends. Yeah, but the good thing about you, uh, yourself, I see, because you already, you, you record your podcast in Zoom. Mm -hmm. Usually you don't have the visual one. And you I don't, have, I do not really, I do not yeah. personally release on YouTube, you but I do. Bother, you don't bother with the visual one. That's why 
is much easier. And I recommend oh, yeah. everybody who want to do the podcast, don't bother yourself with the light or <laughs> with the vi like visual uh, features, but have a very, very good uh, microphone. Uh, try not to have noise. You, you know, that helps you have a great recording. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it's, it's good um, to have a batch recording if you do the podcasting. You know, because as I said, you don't need to be very fancy. <laughs> and then uh, you can distribute it in different week. And if one week you can't work or something happen, still you have uh, some podcasts. So right. you don't, that, you don't that's lose the main, the yeah, that's the main thing is that the one thing that's going to kill your momentum the most is when you miss, you can't record. And like I said, it's Sunday night, you release on Monday and you've got nothing, right? Oh, yeah. That's going to make you stressed out and you're not going to enjoy it. And you're, you're going to get burnt out so much faster because if that happens once and you don't change what you're doing, then chances are it's going to happen again. Right. Exactly. So when week after week, you're stressing out on Sunday because you don't have an episode for Monday. Then something tells me you're not. Usually it never happened for me. First of all, uh, I was really focused to have episode every day, like shows. And then I said, no, that's going to make me so tired. So I try to lighten up. So I only have three, two. I don't mind. One, two, three, four four episodes per week some weeks i have more some weeks i have less and uh, but because the good thing because i have a gap between podcasts and shows then i can keep those podcasts for every day so that's why i'm consistent uh, mm -hmm. with podcasts at least yeah yeah that's yeah and it depends it depends as well like i've had people who they release you know monday through friday but the episodes are five to like 15 minutes long right so if they take like an hour or two hours on one day they can knock out a few weeks worth of content exactly and they can yeah. do it themselves if you schedule interviews most people who do interview based shows that i know of you, you probably do one two episodes released interview episodes released a week right you could knock out a month's worth of content in you know just a few days um, if you're focused and if, you, if, if that's when you let people schedule with you. Um, but again, it really depends. One of the most famous podcasters, John Lee Dumas, Entrepreneur on Fire, right? Um, he's one of the first people who was really successful with podcasting with business. And he would release an interview episode that was between like half an hour and an hour long, seven days a week, right? Wow. It was crazy. Um but he had to stop after a while, I'm pretty sure, because he got burnt out or something. But he oh. recommends batch recording as well. He's actually one of the yeah, places I learned about batch recording from. So I think so it depends. But yeah. Depends <laughs> on you, yeah. Um, so let me, we're going to finish with this podcast. First of all, I just want to know how people can access to your podcast. They just it's, go to Facebook because this way is very difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My podcast is called Path to Podcast Success. Path, it, oh yeah, he's here. Path, Path to Podcast, podcast Success. success. They that, can uh, search it in uh, Facebook. You can just look it up. You could look it up on Google, and it'll be one of the first uh, results there. It's uh, iTunes. You can you can listen to it there. Wherever you listen to podcasts, if you search Path to Podcast Success, it'll be there. Uh, the image is really easy to identify. It's like a green pair of headphones and a blue background. Um, very easy to identify. And you can listen to it there. Um, and I'm on Facebook. That's what the link is to. Um, and that's because I, I, I like working with specific individuals. I like really venting the people that I work with because there's a lot of time and a lot of effort to, to help someone build and grow their podcast. Right. Exactly. So I don't accept just anybody. So that's why I like having conversations uh, with people before I, I work with them. So that's why that's why I give people my Facebook when, so when people Yvonne, ask me how to connect. Yvonne, I have two questions. Uh, yes. First of all, I don't want to miss it. I know, uh, you know, first of all, how can we have more exposure for a podcast? Yes. Uh, my number, number one tip for growing the podcast audience is uh, interview people with audiences themselves on your show. So interview other podcasters. So having someone like you on a show would be incredible, right? Interview people. And 
uh, just as important, if not a little bit more important, but they work hand in hand when they work the best is you have guests on your show that have large audiences themselves or any audiences actually, and you be a guest on their show as well. So interview swaps as we have done together is one of the best ways to grow your, your, your audience, because when you're on someone's show, well, your audience becomes their audience for a minute. Right. And yeah. same thing it goes, it works it both ways. And so that is uh, what I have found to be one of the number one ways to, to grow your podcast audience is to, to put yourself out there, have guests with audiences themselves and be on those people's podcasts as well. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, so do you have a second tip or I go to second question? Uh, th that's, that's honestly my number that's one. Go ahead and go to the second question. Okay. Second one. Uh, I, I never had solo podcast, like uh, always okay. have interview. I'm going to start solo podcast. Do you recommend it? I think it's whatever you want. Both can work. I think a really great system is to do a little bit of both. That's something that a lot of people do, right? If, if you're unsure, if you kind of want both, then go ahead and do both. I personally, I enjoy interviewing more than solo just because it ties into my tip about how to grow, Right. And um, it's fun. I like having conversations more than I like talking just by myself. Um, and it's also, uh, it's, it's actually kind of easier to create content that way because all you do is ask questions and then they let your guests create your content for you, which is kind of cool, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, um, but if you want to do solo episodes, then yeah, solo episodes are great. Um, I've had podcast, the, the podcast I mentioned where he records his podcast on the phone incredibly successful he has never done a single interview was all solo so um it's just whatever your personal preference is both are pretty much just as just as great yes you are right and um because you know what what i did with my own podcast i realized i learned a lot from them that's why i wrote a book with them yeah and natural conceived and i do the same with my other podcasts because as you said, uh, there are lots of values there and uh, everybody's experience is unique. And there are lots of great people that are, are not recognized here. And that's you to actually present them in the world, uh, out, out there and say that, oh, they are presenting a great thing for them. Uh, okay, do you have any other recommendation for uh, people who are starting podcasts. Honestly, I've gone over. I've we've pretty much talked to all the main ones. Um, I don't want to th keep throwing too much at people because that. Well, well actually, you know what? No, there, there's there's my there's my last point is uh, don't overthink it. Right? If you want to start a podcast, just pull out your phone, talk about something you like, go to Anchor, which is free, and upload it. Right? If you have money, do Simplecast. Put a little bit more. You can put you can put a little bit more effort into it than that if you have some money to spend. And that you mentioned too that you like paid stuff for free stuff. I do too. I 100% recommend Simplecast or Libsyn over Anchor. But if you can't spend any money on this, then 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 I would recommend Anchor or another free service over just not doing it. Right. Exactly. So that's my last tip. Don't overthink it. Just just do it. Right. Just do it. Just do it. Thank you so much. That was so energetic. I love our interview and I learned so much from you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye.